All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the newest expansion for Pad Shop 2 called Doomstrophic. This one was created by Gary Gibbons with a bunch of patches also created by Marco Giardina. And they run inside Pad Shop 2, which comes with Cubase Pro and Cubase Artist. And you can also buy Pad Shop 2 if you're not a Cubase user. So these patches are going to run at about $50, which is in my mind, a very good deal. I'm not getting paid to make this video, but they did give me the expansion for free. So that's why it says paid promotion on this video. So Gary Gibbons, that name sounds kind of familiar. And the truth is we connected quite a while ago as I started this whole YouTube thing. And we're not related as far as we can tell, but I'm sure if we went back far enough, we'd probably find some connection. So no family relation there, but we have connected over the years and I'm excited to be able to review something that he's created. And the thing with this expansion that I will say is when I first heard the name, I was thinking that might be a little too dark for my tastes. You know, I'm not creating a lot of dark game soundtracks or movie soundtracks these days. But when I started digging into the patches, I was like, oh man, these patches are extremely good. I, I loaded up one patch and I had a little idea right off the bat. So they're not necessarily just dark and horror type patches. These were patches that would work for any kind of cinematic sound. So it doesn't mean that you have to be doing soundtracks either. You could just be using some of these patches in the background of any kind of pop music production. And it comes with a ton of patches. There's 725 included in here as of this version that I'm working with right now. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just show you some of my favorite patches, maybe play around with this little idea that I've already got started. And then what I'll do in the description is point you to Gary's videos where he goes into some more detail on this library. So let's get right into it. Check out some of these patches. So Pad Shop 2 is a really great virtual instrument. It's called Pad Shop, but it does so much more than just pad sounds. It's a granular type synthesis. It loads samples and you have all sorts of control of modulation. You've got arpeggiators and effects and all of that kind of good stuff built right in. But the granular nature of this synthesizer is what makes it so powerful and definitely what is being exploited in this software. So let's just look at a couple of these patches that I've got in here already. Really interesting cello sound. I've got uh, continual octaves. And if you hold it down longer, you get that, that upper sound. And you see that if I press into the keys, we get aftertouch triggers uh, vibrato. Next patch we've got in here is this Crystal Glamour one. So many beautiful drones in here. And then on this next patch, we've got Dawn of Purity. So here they are together. So let's have a quick listen to this one. This is a staccato rhythmic patch. You can see it says 16th. And let's just try playing something in on this. So as you can see, as I'm playing through, I'm just making sure I'm only pressing down four notes every time on each chord and we're getting the same rhythmic pattern with this little arpeggiated thing that's happening. So before I go and show you some of the other sounds I've got in this little idea, let's go look at some very specific patches and dig into what an individual patch is capable of. So I've got these patches disabled. This is harder on the CPU. I gotta say my computer is very old. It's a 2013 Mac Pro trash can with 32 gigs of RAM and you know lots of SSD storage, but it's getting old and it is hard on the processor on this one. So just be aware of that. You might have to freeze tracks or disable tracks. That's what I've done here. It just disabled these ones. So I'm gonna enable the track. So on this patch, driven rates, after touch controls the distortion settings. So let's check this out. So you can hear the distortion lifting off as I 
press down a little harder. So you can hear that's just very subtle controls that I'm doing with the aftertouch. And let's crank it the other direction. So you could get some really neat glitchy stuff going on just by, you know, playing with the aftertouch. Very cool stuff. And on this patch called Doleful Duo, you'll hear that. The lower portion of the keyboard is split up to be this kind of droney low bass type thing. And then we've got a split up top with this kind of really nice bell sound. And again, we can hear vibrato control by aftertouch. And if we want that to be a little bit more exaggerated, I'm gonna to go to layer B here. So here we can see aftertouch and pitch. Let's crank this right up. Pretty cool. So you can get quite expressive with this library with aftertouch. Of course you can do this on other synthesizers, but I just love how this kind of stuff is already set up on these patches. So here's a really neat example of a beautiful droney patch that has some pitch bend connected to the aftertouch. So watch what happens when I play. Really beautiful stuff and doesn't have to be just for, you know, cinematic stuff. I could work that into any type of song for sure. So now we'll look at one of the drum patches. So you can see it's accessing different areas of this, this drum loop. But according to velocity, you're going to get different areas of that loop. If you play with the pitch bend, things get glitchier and shorter. Move it the other way. And then another patch that we've got here is called bullets. And this one gets different results depending on how hard you hit. So velocity sensitive. What would I do with that kind of patch? Well, I've done it with another one over here. I'll just give you a little, little Cubase tip because, because these might be harder on your processor. If that's the case, then don't be afraid to just sample some of these, right? So what I would do in that case, I've got that track soloed. I'm just gonna record. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take this little MIDI chunk and I'm going to go, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go and I'm going to choose a sampler track. Hit add track and now sampler track in Cubase 11 is beautiful because all you have to do is take your MIDI, drop it right on here and it instantly converts it into a sample. And then I'm all, all I'm going to do is go down to the blue area right here, turn on slice, I'm going to take the threshold and I'm going to crank it way up just so we get a couple of slices right there. And I'm just gonna add one more slice right there by option clicking. And then I can just drag it in just a little bit just to refine it or zoom in if I need to. So now I've got, oh, I've got one little guy I don't need right there. If I option click on it, get rid of it. So now I've got four slices. And now I can just use that as a sample in my project. I can disable this one. I just disable it so that you still have it, or you could delete it if you really wanted to. But then we call this one bullets, and then play that in the project wherever we need it. So next one here is a patch called Fallen Between Cracks. And what I did with this one is when I first loaded it up, I just wanted to isolate the drone, so I went with the drone here on layer B. And then what I did is I played around with the pitch bend because the pitch bend at first was two semitones in either direction. And then what I did is I cranked it up to a full octave. So playing around with pitch bend in situations like this can be really fun. Let me just crank that up. Let's have a listen to that.
So getting very precise with the, the, the pitch bend, you could go in and create some really bizarre textures. After touch controlling the pitch bend there, makes me wish I had a video game to score or something. So now let's look at what else I've got in here. I've got a couple more things that pick up uh, in this second half of this little, little tiny idea. So all I did there was took this disruptions patch and did the same thing that I just showed you by sampling it onto a sample track. So that's what I've got right there. <laughs> And the neat thing about doing this kind of stuff is you can put some modulation in on some kind of percussion, percussive hit. And then what you can do is record a whole bunch of different versions of the same sound so that as you're triggering something over and over again, it's got some variety to it. Next, we've got this battle track, another percussive one, and then we've got the offender track. So let's see what happens when we add the percussion here. So really cool stuff. I'm super impressed with the sounds on this library. It's not expensive. Definitely go make sure you go check out Gary's other videos that really get into detail and walk you through tons of the different patches. And I'll also put links to some songs that Martin Weiss and Dom Segalis have made with this library. Incredible stuff. So thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button and the bell and we'll see you in the next video.